It's a great soundbite to say, oh, all these programs are on the chopping block and we're going to give all that money to defense. Okay. Is that really what's going to happen? Don't you have to run all that by Congress? Don't they ultimately make the budget? You know, in New York, where I'm based, a lot of the publicly funded radio and television are very worried about what's about to happen to them. And they're nervous about budgets. They're nervous about where some of the cuts are going to come from. And I think I'm a big believer in uh, the free market in general and also in alternatives, too. And I do think that publicly funded television and radio provides a really great, important service. I think that they add another voice. They add another layer. Well, I think that it's the American people who are going to save us because they all support public media, whether they voted for President Trump or they didn't. 99% of Americans support public television and radio because of the content, and especially people in rural communities. It's very important to them. It's a lifeline. Not everybody can fly to New York and go see Hamilton. We bring that content to them. I was really taken by how many people are really working for the greater good, because if you just sit home and you follow Twitter or sit and watch any of the some of the news programs we won't name them you know you can feel that this is a really divided country but I found people on both sides of the aisle very committed to uh, making life better for people in very basic ways and certainly in supporting the arts well I, I think we accomplished uh, you know, sort of shoring up a lot of support um, on both sides of the aisle for keeping the National Endowment for the Arts. And hopefully we also accomplished, you know, changing people's perception about uh, who we are and what the National Endowment for the Arts is. Because it is not for successful actors. It's not for Hollywood. It's not for Broadway. What is unique about that program is that there is a grant for every congressional district in the entire United States, 70% uh, of which is not in big cities. So it's the little towns and cities all over the country that benefit most, and it will be devastating to them if the program is cut. I mean, I get to work with the amazing Tim Daly, who's brought me on to this crazy ride that I feel so lucky to be a part of. Um, yeah, I'm so happy to be a part of the Creative Coalition now and, and to fight for things that are just so important in so many realms. I mean, the arts cover so many more areas than people understand, and, and educating people about that I think is so important. Please fund the NEA. We're all here for the NEA through the Creative Coalition, and it's $150 million that brings back $7 for every dollar of seed money the NEA gives to someone. And uh, I, I consider it patriotic infrastructure. You're giving people things to do in small towns, and it goes to every constituency in America. It's not just big, rich cities like New York, Chicago, and L.A. It goes to podunk towns and Oklahoma or Utah. It helps everybody. But this, this trip feels different. I feel like we're getting support on both sides of the aisle because, again, this is not a partisan issue. Everybody benefits from the arts. And so, you know, the money that is spent federally on the arts yields back nine more dollars. I don't see how that's a bad thing. So I feel like we're, we're making ground and we're, I, I feel more hopeful now tonight than I did earlier this morning when we started. Our show has never spoken about a party, and I think that that's what really separates us and, and should sort of set a better example for the government we have right now. Um, because it, it doesn't, a, a little letter doesn't define who we are or what we believe in. And, and especially after what I've gone through today, talking to senators and talking to what, talking to them about what they believe in um, and how certain things don't quite align with those letters. If you hear no other message about the arts, they make money. That's it. If you, uh, you know, come on. If, if you don't understand why it's a measure of our civilization to encourage the arts, if you don't understand that art is therapeutic, you can't understand that the arts make money. And that's all I'm going to say.